We started out with an acrylic skin and a wooden seahorse cutout. We gave him pretty edges, a glistening ocean-inspired main body skin, and added a sparkly sand and mica beach to his head and back. But we want to really make his ocean special. So let's add resin and see what that does. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. In part one, I told you we were going to add resin here and maybe some embellishments. But giving this acrylic pour a resin clear coat is not enough. Let's give it some fun interest. In the resin jewelry world, there's a technique called the water technique, which is meant to suggest the look when sunlight hits rippling water like this. It's a technique that's been around for so long, I sadly don't even know who to credit for it. When it's done with jewelry, we usually do it with UV resin and on a tiny scale. But what if we try it with epoxy resin on a larger scale? I don't know, but I think we should try it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've never done it on a non-jewelry piece, but I'm pretty sure it should work. <laughs> so let's do this. First things first, I needed to elevate my seahorse in case resin drips down the edge. So I used double-sided tape to affix a couple of cups to his reverse side. That way I don't have to worry about knocking him off. If he moves, the cups move. <laughs> Next, I'm going to mix up my resin. I don't need very much. Less than an ounce is going to do me just fine. I'm going to use ClearCast 7050 for this. It's a two to one ratio resin, meaning I add two parts of the resin and one part of the hardener. I'm just gonna use this small cup. To make my life easier, I've marked off two parts of the resin and one part for the hardener. So I'll fill resin to this line and then add hardener until it reaches that line. That way I only need one cup for mixing. If I needed a larger amount, I would definitely use my silicone cup. Since it's such a small amount, this will work just fine. When you first start to mix resin, what once was clear starts to look very cloudy. And you want to mix resin for at least three minutes, most resins. And you'll see that when you approach the second minute or so, your resin starts to look clear again. So the striations will diminish as the resin gets properly mixed. Now, you don't want to mix too quickly because that just increases your bubbles. Make sure to scrape along the inside of the cup so that you get everything well mixed. And scrape the bottom of your cup really well too. Get all the corners. And so the resin has become much clearer. It's got bubbles, but the striations are gone. Now that I'm confident that my resin is well mixed, I'm going to separate it into two eh, somewhat equal amounts because I need to tint some of this. Now I'm going to let my resin sit for a while and thicken up. It'll also give the bubbles a chance to rise. I don't want my resin to be quite this liquid for this particular technique for a couple of reasons. Thicker resin is better behaved, meaning it stays where you put it without running off the edge as quickly. And thicker resin holds crisp color lines better without them softening or melting or blending as resin loves to do. Now, if you're working with a large amount of resin for let's say a bigger piece and you're wanting to wait for it to thicken up a bit, you are much safer to let that resin sit in a wide 
shallow silicone or disposable bowl or dish. Why? If you leave a large amount of resin in a cup, let's say one this tall or even bigger, and it's full up to here with resin, and you let that sit for a long time, 15, 20 minutes, that resin is going to want to cure pretty quickly, too quickly. And it's going to get super hot as it does it because there'll be a thick amount of it in the cup. The same resin spread out as a thinner layer over a larger area will cure much slower. The amount of resin I'm working with is small enough not to be a concern. So I can wait for a good 20 minutes. I'll check back on it in 15 just to see where we're at. Now, the resin that you're working with may be thicker to begin with or have a different cure rate, so your timing may be different. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and my resin is definitely thicker. So now what I want to do is color this part just slightly milky, a little translucent. Now, in order to do that, you can use resin tint, white alcohol ink, or acrylic paint. The crucial step is to add the most minute amount possible to start. We don't want our resin to become opaque. We just want it to be translucent. So if you're going to use something like resin tint, even half a drop will make the resin go completely opaque. So I'm only going to touch my alcohol ink, which is what I've chosen to do here. A little drop, the littlest I can manage, onto my stick. Now I chose alcohol ink because it doesn't go as opaque as quickly as acrylic paint or resin tint can go. So this is almost what I want, but I can go a little whiter. So I'll do another drop. Okay, that is pretty good. So this is what I'm after. Because I want to be able to see some of the blue through this color. And now I'm pulling out my seahorse. And I am going to spread this resin along his body. And I want a thin coat because if it's too thick, it'll be difficult for the clear resin to push through. You know, I could go a little wider than this. Trying to make sure I get it to the edges and up onto the beach a little bit. And it's very well behaved. It's not running off the edge because it's pretty thick now. It's like the cold honey. Like I said, I want to bring it up onto the beach, especially over that area where you could see the skin through the sand. Hey, I think we are Good. Okay, I have zoomed you in so that you can see the fun. I just have like a little metal rod, anything will work. A toothpick, a bamboo skewer, whatever. I just have this because it's easy to clean off when I'm done. So I am just picking up some resin. See, it's kind of thick and I'm just going to take some of that and I'm just going to add a drop. And that drop should force its way through and make a clear spot. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Just add a drop. So the weight of the clear is pushing the milky white out of the way. And then you just keep doing that until you've covered the entire surface. And your spots don't have to be perfectly round. In fact, eventually, They'll start to push each other in various directions and they'll get all different shaped, which is what you want. 
And you want your drops to be all different sizes, some bigger than others. And then if you see a spot like here that's too big, too much white, you might want to come in and add a little spot of clear there. <laughs> this is working out really nicely. I've never done this on a piece that wasn't jewelry, so I am like extra delighted to see it working. Now, if you're going to be working on a bigger piece, don't let your resin get to this stage. Do it sooner because your resin will cure before you're finished. <laughs> if I was working on a really big piece, I might want to have someone helping me doing part of it also so that it got done before the resin cured. And what's nice is that resin is self-leveling so all these little drops flatten out. And because I let the resin get to a point where it was nice and thick, it will dome more than want to run off the edge. If you see like a little part of the skin that you want to expose, like I can see that there are some like bubbly patterns right here, then make sure to put a drop there to expose that. Open up a window to let it show. What I'm running into is my resin is curing a little too quickly for me now. So, if I do this again, I will not wait this long. This is a little challenging now. The resin's a little more thick than I need it to be. So it's taking a little bit longer because I have to be mindful of all the little threads that are being formed. I probably could have done it with runnier resin, but never having tried it before, I wasn't sure. But I'm still having fun doing this. <laughs> I can go back in and make some of the first dots bigger just by adding more clear right on top in the middle of it, and it'll spread more. For example, right here. I want that to be much bigger. I love seeing some of the paint underneath pop through and I can see that it glistens. And then something else I can do to help myself is I can heat this periodically and that'll make it runny again just for a few minutes. And be careful, you don't want to burn yourself doing that. Because <laughs> that's not fun. Now it's much more liquidy and easier to manage. I think I'm gonna stop there, which is just as well because I pretty much have hardly any resin left. I, I lucked out, I mean, look at that. It's like I, I, and it was almost a guess really on how much resin. I just measured this area from here to here was about eight inches. From here to here was about three. So I thought, okay, so eight times three, that's 24. So that's 24 milliliters of resin that I would need. And I thought, well, but you know, I'm going for a dome. So I probably want a little more. So I went to 30 and that, that, that was that. Now all I'm doing is I'm checking to see if the resin came all the way to the edge, all the way around, because that is what I would want. Let's take care of any surface bubbles. Now the very final step is adding some embellishments just to give him, you know, some stuff to show off. So I pulled out a couple of shells, a starfish, a sand dollar. The starfish was sent to me by Colleen. Thank you so much. I love them. I can't get over that they came this intact. They come in this very protective box and, you know, a couple of them have little chips here and there, but they look fabulous. So what I've done, to protect the sand dollar and starfish is coated them in resin prior to this. Now, 
I know that this is the top of the starfish, but I kind of like the back better. It's kind of prettier. <laughs> so I'm going with that side. Now I got to make sure that wherever I put him, I'm happy with because this is pretty permanent. Now, the good thing about resin is it's glue. The bad thing about resin is it's glue. <laughs> so, when I put this down, it's down. It is not coming back up. And I got all risky. I took my gloves off because they were a little sticky. But I don't think I'm going to be touching the resin anymore, so I think I'm safe. I'm going to put this guy right there yeah right there okay that's pretty already <laughs> okay we can stop we're done <laughs> uh, so i purposely put the end that has a little chip off the point there so that i could cover it with the next creature how about the sand dollar there what else do we have? I love this shell. I think it's so pretty. Since I didn't do like a white foamy line, I mean, I still could, I guess, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use the shells instead. They will camouflage this transition area for me. round things off and I think we're done I think we are done 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 <laughs> done 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 oh my gosh I'm so happy I love this little line here oh it makes me so happy I think this is very 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 pretty <laughs> I really do I hope you do too because I kind of think it's super pretty all right I'm gonna put this to bed and we will look at it when it's cured. Our little guy is finished and ready for his close-ups. Thank you, Sharon, for inspiring me to think beach. I'd love to see you try this effect. I think you'd do something amazing with it. I encourage you viewers all to subscribe to Sharon's channel too to see what she does. I think she's going to blow you away. <laughs> I hope you all got some fun ideas from this project. If you make something inspired by this, definitely show it off in my Facebook group or other groups you enjoy. Please tag me when you post so that I can see what you've done and so that you can let others know where to come for more ideas. Let me know what you think in the comments and give this a thumbs up to let me know to create more projects. Let me know which videos on this channel make you the happiest and which make you come back for more. In order to be able to make videos for you full time, I need your help. Share my videos as much as you can. Use any of my links just to get you to Amazon every time you shop there. It costs you nothing and can help me so much. I'm a one woman operation. Sourcing and getting supplies, designing projects, filming and photographing, getting links for everything, editing the videos. Oh my gosh, my hair gets grayer just thinking about it. <laughs> Answering comments, messages, and emails, managing the Facebook group. It's a lot, you guys. Consider being a sponsor or patron to help keep this channel going and to help keep me sane. <laughs> if you get decent value here, I'd appreciate having you as a partner because having just music playing in the videos is really starting to look good. I kind of envy those channels. <laughs> In the end, being creative is definitely more fun when you get to share it with others. I'm delighted to share what I know and do with you. Thank you for being my amazing viewers. 
Go let your creative nature shine and shine this week. Hugs to you all. See you later. Bye now.